times 10 to be negative 10. And now it's in proper scientific notation. If you were to take the numbers in black and simply move the decimal point eight places to the left, you'd have eight zeros plus you'd have nine zeros in front of the two six. If you take this and move it ten places to the left, this is one and then you need nine zeros. Okay? Same number. All right. What if you're asked to multiply two numbers that are in scientific notation together? The fact is here, this is four numbers being multiplied. It's 2.03 times 10 squared times 1.2 times 10 to the 8. Well, when we're multiplying a bunch of numbers together, does the order really matter? No, because 1 times 2 times 3 is the same as 2 times 3 times 1 is the same as 1 times 3 times 2. No matter what order you multiply them in, you're going to get the same answer. So we're going to use the information from Friday, and we're going to group things together in a manner that it's easier to multiply. Well, what I want to group together are the decimal numbers and then the powers of 10 together. And when I do that, you'll see that I have 2.03 times 1.2, and that's going to be multiplied by 10 squared times 10 to the 8. Well, on your calculator, you can easily come up with what is 2.03 times 1.2. Somebody, please. 2.4 three six and now using our rules for multiplying bases with exponents what are we supposed to do with the exponents when you're multiplying variables you add them well if it's a base of 10 it's the same thing as x squared times x to the 8 except it's 10 squared times 10 to the 8 I add the exponents and get 10 to the 10th. So we regroup and then we simply add the powers of 10. And this we need to check and make sure that it's in proper scientific notation. And that's your answer. This is in proper scientific notation. In this case, you're being asked to multiply, so we're going to regroup 23.1 times 0.02, and that's multiplied by 10 to the negative fifth times 10 cubed. Well, you can use your calculator to figure out 23.1 and 0.02. Point four six two, and we use our rules for multiplying a, a like base with exponents. What do you do with the exponents? You add them. It's just like x to the negative fifth times x cubed. You add them and get x to the negative two, but it's 10 to the negative fifth times 10 cubed, so it's 10 to the negative two. And in scientific notation, it's okay to have a negative exponent because that's what it is. But what's the problem with this answer? The decimal's in the wrong spot. Well, that's okay because we just learned how to fix it. We indicate where the decimal should be, draw an arrow to where it actually is, and we make the adjustment to the existing exponent. Well, what adjustment, positive or negative? Negative how many? Negative one. So I've got 4.62 times 10 to the negative 3. And that's your final answer. Not too hard, huh? I don't think so. All right. What if we're dividing? You subtract the exponents now. You still regroup. On your calculator, you divide 
41.4 by 2.1. And then with the exponents, the powers of 10, we subtract 10 minus 8. So what is 41.2 divided by 2.1? Anyone want to help me out? 19.714287. Okay, let's change this. 41.4 divided by 2. It's 20.7. 20.7. Okay. And for the tens, we're going to subtract the exponents. And what is 10 minus 8? Two. Okay. But is my answer good to go? No, it's not, because it's not in proper form. All right, well, I'll put it in proper form. I use my carrot to indicate where my decimal should be, draw my arrow to where it actually is, and adjust the existing exponent by plus one. Adjust it by plus one. So the correct answer is 2.07 times 10 cubed. I think I have one more example. Actually, I have two. Same numbers, 41.4, 2. But now look at my exponents. 41.4 divided by 2 is 20.7. <coughs> we already established that last time. And now, when I subtract my exponents, I've got negative 10 minus an already negative 5. Well, what happens when you subtract a negative? It turns to addition. So this is 20.7 times 10 to the negative 5. What if you multiply the negative? It's the same thing. No, if you're multiplying two negatives, you're going to add the exponents. So it would be negative 15. Okay? Dividing, you subtract exponents. Multiplying, you add exponents. But we need to adjust, right? Decimal should be between the 2 and the 0. It actually is one space to the right. So I'm going to make a plus one adjustment to the existing exponent. So the answer to this problem is 2.07 times 10 to the negative 4. Is that a decimal or a whole number when I can convert that back? Is this a small number or a big number? It's a small number. It's a small number. My exponent's negative. I'm moving my decimal to the left, which means I'm creating a decimal instead of a big whole number. Now, what if your division problem is written side by side instead of one on top of the other? It's the same thing. It's 2 divided by 4. Don't put it in a fraction form. You're dealing with decimals here. And 10 to the 10th divided by 10 to the negative 5th, which we subtract exponents, right? So it's 10 minus an already negative 5. 0. 0.5 times 10 to the 15th. But what do I need to do? I need to adjust. Decimal point should be here. It's actually to the left one space. So I have a minus one adjustment. Annalise, you have a question? Because two divided by four is one half or 0.5. We don't want to use a fraction in scientific notation. But one half is the equivalent of 0.5. Okay? All right. Homework assignment is on the board. Be sure and check for any bonus quizzes tonight.